When preparing a meal, what exactly do you take into account? Is your plate balanced? Have you got your macros and micros right? How many calories does it contain? You might worry about the protein and the carbs and even about the cost of the ingredients. But do you ever care about your meal's carbon footprint? Basically, its impact on the environment? Some do, and that's why they choose to be vegan or vegetarian in some cases. And those kind of meals are supposed to be easy on the environment. But look at what this new Singaporean study has found. Researchers of the National University of Singapore studied 151 popular dishes around the world. They assigned biodiversity footprints to the dishes. Now, for those unversed, biodiversity footprint basically indicates the extent to which a dish harms other species in nature. And surprisingly, many Indian staples ranked high up in the list. That is, they had a very high biodiversity footprint. Even the ones with rice and legumes. Aren't they supposed to be more eco-friendly? What were these dishes? Chances are you might have had them today or earlier in the week itself. I'm talking about idli, chana masala, rajma and chicken jalfrezi. Apparently, these Indian dishes are causing significant damage to the environment. <coughs> Buy it if you want to, but I am finding it a little difficult to believe. Let's just take a deeper dive. Look at this. According to the research, vegetarian Indian staples like rajma or red kidney beans and idli, which is essentially rice cake, have a higher biodiversity footprint than lechazo and picana. Lechazo is made from lamb. Pikana is a beef cut. They are telling us that dishes for which animals are outright killed are better for biodiversity as compared to crops. Even chutney has ranked so high. Chutney is a mere side dish made out of some spices and vegetables or fruits. The research says its biodiversity footprint is higher than fraldina, which again is a beef cut. Isn't it a bit hard to swallow? Now, I understand there are a lot of factors at play here. Agriculture requires a lot of land. Conversion of a species' natural habitat to cropland is bound to affect it. But is it really worse than killing certain animals altogether? A significant number of Indians, 39% to be specific, are vegetarians. 81% follow some restrictions or other on meat in their diet. This includes refraining from eating certain meats or not eating meat on certain days. So in theory, India should be a more sustainable space for food. But the research says it isn't. Then what is one supposed to make of that? Are the results of the study skewed? Just how much should you trust these studies? Enough to change your dietary habits, is it? I would suggest otherwise. Now, there are studies telling people all sorts of things, often contradicting each other. Consider the tobacco industry, for example. For years, it has been falsely promoting low-harm versions of their products. For decades, in fact. Some brands went so far as to feature doctors in their ads, claiming that cigarettes were not that bad. Can you believe that? Now, it has been proven that light, low-tar or filtered cigarettes are not any less dangerous. In fact, a federal judge in the United States convicted major tobacco companies on racketeering charges. And why is that? Because they lied to the public with their health claims. The truth is that the risk of dying from smoking has only increased over the years when most smokers switch to these falsely advertised healthier cigarette types. What I intend to say here is take the advertisements, the studies, the so-called groundbreaking research with a pinch of salt. A lot of factors are at play. We don't know if Singaporean scientists had any beef with Indian food, but dismissing nutritious vegetarian staples as environmental hazards seems a bit too much. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.